Welcome to this service of United Communion in our church in Cardigan today on the 12th Sunday of Trinity. And we are joined today by Reverend John Bennett, Reverend Chris Frost, and Reverend Peter Ratcliffe with Sarah Jane on the piano. And we'll start with our hymn, Father, Lord of all creation, ground of being, life and love, sung in Welsh. Spritlan. Amen. Gadangilith, Dad Neville, a my poor Calon and Agore Diti, Ni Ashon Gizio Indim of the Ursint, Glanhani a flamed a Spritlan, Ermoin ini de Gari a Fadolin Fadlon, True Yessi Grist in Harkloy. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And as we bring ourselves now in a moment of silence, with open hearts to God, for all the things that we have done and all the things that we have not done, and together, Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought, word and deed and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and walk us in his way to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, 
who forgives all who truly repent. Have mercy on us and set us free from sin. Strengthen us in goodness and keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than either we desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things which we are not worthy to ask, but through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. And our first reading is from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 12, verse 9 to 21, and Gamrag. Byddid eich cariad yn ddi ragrith, casewch ragioni, glanwch wrthaioni, byddwch rysog yn eich serch at eich gilydd fel brawdoliaeth, rhowch y blaen eich gilydd mewn parch, and the orfwys eich ymdroddiad, and frwd eich ysbryd, gwasanaethwch yr arglwy, llawen hewch mewn gobaith, safwch yn gadarn dan o thrymder, daliwch ati i weddio, cyfranwch at reidiau'r saint, a byddwch barod eu lletig arwch, bendithiwch y rhai sydd eich erlyd, bendithiwch heb fertithio byth, llawen hawl, Gyda'r rhai sy'n llawen hai, ac wylwch gyda'r rhai sy'n wylw. Byddwch yn gytun am llith eich gilydd. Gochelwch feddyliau mawr eddog, yn hytrach, rhodiwch gyda'r distadl. Peidiwch â'u cyfrif eich hunain yn ddoeth. Peidiwch â thalu drwg am ddrwg i neb. Byddwyd eich am canion yn anrheddydus yng Ngolwg pob dyn. Os yw'n bosibl, ac os yw'n dybynnu arnwch chwi, daliwch mewn heddwch a phob dyn. Peidiwch am ynni diol, gyfeillion anwyl, ond rhowch eich gyfle i'r digofain dwyfol, fel y mae'n ysgrifenedig. Mae fi pia diol, mae fi a dalaf yn ôl, medd yr arglwydd. Yn hytrach, os bydd dydelu'n yn newynu, rho fwyd iddo. Os bydd yn sychedu, rho iddo beth i wefyd. Os gwneud hyn, byddi hyn pentyrru marwr poeth ar ei ben. Paid y goddef dy drechu gan drygioni, trecha dy ddrygioni a daioni. Dyma aer yr arglwydd, diolch a fo i ddiw. And our Gospel reading is taken from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 16, verses 21 to 28. Grandeo chara vengil Christ and all St. Matthew, gogonian titi o arglwydd. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, chief priests and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me will find it. What good will it be for a man if he gains the whole world, yet forfeits his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? 
For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what he has done. I tell you the truth. Some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Many people say, as a figure of speech, well, we all have our cross to bear, don't we? And often, they're talking about an illness they may have, or a loved one has. They may be talking about a difficult relationship, or a job. However, in our reading from Matthew, Jesus foretells the cross as the crux, the fulcrum, the center of human history, the turning point of history. And then he tells us what the cross we really have to bear is. Let's go back a bit. Peter had just recognized Jesus for who he truly is, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. It was a moment of profound revelation. Jesus commends Peter and proclaims that he will build his church on this confession of faith, this confession, this acclamation that Jesus is the Son of the living God. Now where Jesus says this is interesting. He says this at Syriza Philippi, Uh, there there is a great big rock and under that rock there are a number of false altars, I've been there, obviously they're not used now, but a number of false altars where the Greeks and Romans used to sacrifice to false gods and they're known actually as the gates of hell, they were known as the gates of hell then and Jesus says on this confession of faith I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. What Jesus is saying is, Peter, you've recognized that these false gods are not going to save you. These false gods in the hillside that can do nothing won't save you. He's recognized that Jesus is the son of the living God, the only one who can save us. Then Jesus explains to Peter what this will really mean. It will mean that Jesus will be persecuted by the religious leaders of the time, be crucified and killed, and then be raised from the dead. Peter then thinks, hang on a minute. This is not how a Messiah should act. He takes Jesus aside and begins to rebuke him. Why does Peter do this? Why does he rebuke Jesus? Well, the Jews had an expectation that the Messiah would overthrow the hated Romans, restore the land of Israel to Jewish rule, and set up an earthly kingdom. Peter is trying to explain to Jesus what a real Messiah should do. And a suffering and dying Messiah has no place in Peter's worldview. Jesus rebukes Peter very, very strongly. Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, a stumbling block to me. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Jesus had come for a far greater mission than restoring Jewish rule to Israel. He had come to die for our sins, to save those who confess that Jesus is God the Son, the Son of the living God. And he proved his sacrifice for our sins was acceptable to his Father by his glorious resurrection from the dead. The resurrection is one of the best attested facts in human history. Jesus would not be diverted from his mission. Yes, Jesus did die as King of the Jews, And that is still one of his titles, as I explained in my sermon, some of you have, a few weeks ago. But here, 
Jesus is talking about the fulcrum of human history, his death and resurrection. It will save not just Jews who believe Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God, but all who believe and trust in him. Now we come to the cross. Jesus calls us to bear. Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my disciples, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. What does Jesus mean here? After all, he paid the price for our sins on the cross. If we put our faith in him, we are forgiven and have the enormous and incredible privilege of having Jesus as our friend in this life today and seeing him and worshipping him face to face after our earthly bodies die. We are sinners. We cannot save ourselves. We cannot pay the price for our own sins. Only the sinless Son of God could pay the price of sin. As the hymn says, only he could open the gate of heaven and let us in. So, if Jesus paid the price of sin on the cross 2,000 years ago, what is the cross we have to bear? Jesus says it is the cross of self-denial. A true Christian faith will rejoice in being forgiven and live a life that follows Jesus. What is that kind of life? Well, we have a clue about this kind of life in the reading we had from Romans chapter 12. It is a life that loves truth and goodness and hates falsehood. It's a life of hospitality and love. It is a life that contributes to the needs of the church and those in need. It is a life that rejoices in Christian fellowship. It is a life of prayer. The cross of self-denial then becomes more challenging in this letter to the Romans. It's a life that blesses those and prays for those who don't like us, who persecute us. It's a life willing to associate with the poor, the deprived and the dispossessed. It's a life that lives in peace as far as we can with others. It is a life that overcomes evil with good. Now that is hard and cannot be done without God's grace. Really, the cross of self-denial means forgetting about ourselves and seeking God and the good of others. How can we put the cross of Christ and the cross of self-denial, self-forgetfulness, in the forefront of our lives. Well, firstly, it means like Peter, recognising Jesus for who he really is. Not a dead God, but a living God. God the Son, the Messiah, our Saviour from sin. It means trusting in Christ alone for forgiveness and salvation. Once we have done that, There is a glorious freedom and liberty. We don't need to gaze at our navel, wondering whether or not we are saved. None of us deserve forgiveness, but God loves us as much as he loves his own son and graciously forgives all who trust in him and believe Jesus was raised from the dead. The cross we carry then is one of self-denial or self-forgetfulness. There are many ways we can carry this cross. For example, giving to those in need at this time of crisis in our world. Charitable giving to others, generosity, is a wonderful way of showing our Christian faith. It can mean spending time with the bereaved, the orphan, the lonely, those forgotten in the headlong rush of life today. It can also mean asking for God's forgiveness for those who have hurt us and praying for them. It can mean being a peacemaker between people who have fallen out with one another, 
or it can mean working for peace between nations. The wonderful hope of the gospel, of course, is that when Jesus returns, there will be peace on earth forever. The paradox of the Christian life is that when we serve God, we are truly free. The cross of Christ has set us free from sin and eternal death. The cross of self-denial sets us free from ourselves and joyful in serving God and others. Amen. May we pray. Father God, this morning we thank you for everything your word teaches us and for Peter's wise words to us just now and his challenges that we've, we've just heard. We know that in many ways the spiritual life modeled model to us by your son, Jesus Christ, can sometimes feel bittersweet. He shows us love, mercy and patience, understanding and kindness beyond anything we could possibly imagine. And yet following his way can feel so difficult. Our old ways of thinking, our old and unchristian values, and the values of the society around us all try to press us and shape us into their own, own mold. Our old and unhealthy ways of coping with the, the natural selfishness within our own characters that can often feel too powerful to overcome. Father God, forgive us when we're set in our ways. Help us in the power of your Holy Spirit to be constant examiners of our own lives, to discover the dark places in our hearts and our own particular foolish ways that, that don't fully reflect the life and ways of Jesus Christ. Help us each to discover what we need to change in our lives and to make the bold choice to repent of our old ways of doing things and to embrace your new ways. And help us to do that not in fear, but in the reassurance of knowing that you truly love us, that you are on our side, and that becoming more like Jesus and taking up our cross each day is full of its own rewards as you change us more and more. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
This morning, we pray for our whole local ministry area. We thank you for our individual churches, wherever they may be, and we ask that you would fill us again with your Holy Spirit, so that we might represent you so joyfully that our churches would be filled again with new people seeking and desiring to follow you. Help us as churches to be always flexible and ready to change, to be ready to welcome and nurture new people into our Christian community, particularly younger generations who know so little about Jesus Christ, our Saviour and our friend, and who are missing out on so much. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, in a, in a moment of silence, we remember friends and family members and anyone else close to our hearts who might be feeling unwell, lonely, perhaps desperate, or who are in need of your salvation. Lord, we trust our friends and family into your loving care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, we remember those who are still in such difficult situations within the coronavirus epidemic. We ask that you would heal the sick, be at work in our hospitals and bless the doctors and nurses who are fighting to take care of patients. We pray for the key workers and other people who are taking risks to keep our nation moving, including supermarket workers, postal workers, refuse collectors, volunteers and teachers. Thank you so much for them and their hard work. And we ask that you would shower your protection, grace and favour upon them. And we draw our prayers to a close by saying together, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we come to our communion, you may like to have a piece of bread ready to eat with me to remember the sacrifice of Christ upon the cross, his body broken and his blood shed for us. And so to the peace, a tang nefedd. Tang nefedd yr aglwydd a bod gyda chwi bob amser. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. We sing our communion hymn. Behold the Lamb who bears our sins away. Remember the 
drank death's cup that all may enter in to receive the life of God. So we share in this bread of life, and we drink of the sacred voice as a song of our bond of grace around the table. So with thankfulness and faith we rise to respond and to remember our call to follow in the steps of Christ as his body here on earth. As we share in the sufferings, we proclaim Christ will come. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. True and living God, the source of life for all creation, you have made us in your own image. Always and everywhere we give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Under Garia datom, I can come for any other answer, and for nice to bar be void and waredur. Daith y gair yng nghawd, bi'n byw yn ein plith a gwles am ei ogoniant. Dros ei pechodau ni, a phechodau ar choch fyd, dioddedd o angau ar y groes. At gobodau stedd i fywyd mewn byddigoliaeth, a i fychafu mewn gygoniant. Throedd y ef rwt yn anfond ysbryd lân ar dy eglwys, a wneud ni yn bobl i ti. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Benigedigotti. Ddiw holl alliog am ei raglwydd iesu, yn ôl sefyd echweredd Gymryd Bara. Ac wedi rhoi diolch i ti fe'i torodd a rhoi yw ddisgyblion y dweud, Cymerwch, bwytewch, hwn yw fy ngorff a rhoddi'r drosoch, wynewch hyn er cof amdanedd. Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given you thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Avochon bawb, a copan hwrn yw'r cyfamod newydd yn mynwai di, a dwellgir drosoch a dros lawr, er myddain pachadau. Gynnewch hyn bob pro rybwchedd er cof amdanad. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come in glory. Felly ddiw cariadus, gan goffau a berth crist dy fab un waith am byth ar y groes, a bydd y goliaeth ei atgyfodiad, gofynnwn i ti dderbyn ein haberth hwn o foliant. Yn fond y ysbrydlan arn omni, send your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts, that we may be fed with the body and blood of your Son, 
and be filled with his life and goodness. Unite us in Christ and give us your peace, that we may do your work and be his body in the world. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Fel ydysgodd yn y chawd o'r ni, gweddion yn hyderus. Ein tad, yr hynwyt yn y nefoedd, sanctaid i'r enw, deled dy dernas, wneled ewyllus, megis yn y nef, felly ar y ddea hefyd, dyro i ni heddiw ein bera benediol, a madda i ni ein dyledion, fel y myddewn ninnau ein dyledwyr, ac nac arwain ni fyddigaeth, Eithr gwared ni rhag rhyw, cyn eis ei ddod tîr dyrnes, ar gallu, ar gagoniant, yn oes oes oedd. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, for we all share in one bread. Come. Let us receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ given for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. God Christ, of Gedwa and the Boe Chugwina. Quiet Christ, of Gedwa and the Boe Chugwina. Gadwan of Boa Trigwina. Amen. Christ, the body of Christ, keep you in eternal life.
Thank you for joining us this morning for our communion service. And thanks to those who helped with this service today. Diolch o cheraglwydd o herwydd graslon yw ef. Together. God of compassion, in this Eucharist you have set aside our sins and given us your healing. Grant that we who are made whole in Christ may bring that healing to this broken world. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, who was wounded for our sins, that you may bear in your life the love and joy and peace, which are the marks of Jesus in his disciples. Abendeth tu o a tard a mar barasbitla, the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Be with you and remain with you, and with those near and dear to you, today and always. Amen. Ewch mewn tangnefedd, i gari a gwasanaethu'r aglwydd, yn enw Christ. Amen.